Good morning, everybody. Um, today is going to be an unusual day. Today is going to be a day of remembrance, and um, we had a little technical difficulty yesterday, and we're still having a little bit of a problem, but I think we're going to get through it today, and I hope that you will get to hear something that uh, I really wanted to share with you yesterday. It's, uh, whew, we have got so many people that are suffering and hurting and um, have dealt with the loss of a loved one, and I just think we all need to support each other. And so I have an opportunity to share something with you. And um, I think about Valentine's Day and the fact that uh, Chris Hyde was laid to rest on Valentine's Day. His parents dealt with that, his beautiful wife dealt with that, his children dealt with that, friends and, and loved ones, everybody who, who knew and loved this guy dealt with his death from COVID. And uh, yesterday, my guest, and I have to say thank you so much to Kenny, uh, Culture Jock. He has given me three of these to give away. So I'm going to give these away, and y'all are going to, somebody's going to get an opportunity to win them. I am really enjoying this book. We don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. Um, I've seen so many people who did well and got through COVID, and then I've seen some people who the lingering effects caused all kinds of problems. But I never, ever, ever thought that Chris Hyde would leave this earth. I just thought he's a robust, healthy, big trucker, and he's going to be fine. And um, he is fine now because he had a he had a complete healing, and he is with the Lord now. But his family is dealing with this. And one of the ways his family is dealing with this is to remember the good times. And part of the good times had to do with music because they had a little group and a little band and they traveled around and they played and they picked and they grinned and they loved it. Chris played drums, Jeff Blackwell played guitar and David Hyde on keyboard. And we're gonna share a little bit of that today. And they're gonna be doing a song that their mama wrote. Uh, mama Sweet Carolyn wrote the, the words and then I don't know if the guys put the music to it or if she did the music. But she and her sisters um, sang in church for many, many years, and um, she likes to sing and likes to deliver a message in song. And so they got together, and they did this. And we have a CD, and um, we're just going to share this. And you just think about This is like if you were sitting around the kitchen table, and when I think about Gilmer County, and think about the Chansey family and the Cantrell family and the Abernathys and, and all these people in these mountains who used to entertain themselves after church on Sunday, sitting on the front porch, picking and grinning and singing, and often mom would sing, dad would sing, somebody would play the banjo. And um, that's what we did for entertainment. And uh, a lot of that was before radios and before television. And so um, the music of the mountains is still here and we wanna share it. And so today you're gonna hear, the song is called Wings of Faith. And again, Carolyn Hyde wrote the song and um, I'm not sure if she did the music or if her boys did the music, but they got together. And again, Chris Hyde is on the drums and Jeff Blackwell on guitar. Jeff Blackwell went to be with the Lord. And um, sadly, there's so many of their cousins who have passed away from cancer. Jeff had cancer. And then David Hyde is on keyboard. And um, David Hyde and Carolyn are still here among the living, which is awesome. But the other two have gone on to be with the Lord. So we wanna share this with you. And again, you think about wings of faith as they lay their son to rest on Monday. Um, they do have faith. And that is the one thing that's gonna get them through this. It's gonna get everybody through the loss of this wonderful young man. We're gonna show a picture of Chris now as we do the music. And then we're gonna share some more of the local music. And we're gonna share a couple of other things one of my favorite songs ever that we're going to share with y'all today is Ricky Fields doing The Old Man Is Dead because somebody asked me a question and I said, what do you mean? And I said, you know, everybody can change their life and everybody can turn it around. And this song says it best, we can, because when you become a new person in Christ, your life completely changes. And I love this song and I hadn't heard it until I saw Ricky Fields over at Antioch Baptist Church. So we're gonna share that with you. We're gonna share a little bit more of, of just that good music that comes from the heart. And then we're gonna do something that I want to share because it's almost Easter season. And I want you to plan a trip to Fields of the Wood for an Easter event. Just go and take a picnic, take yourself, take your family, 
sit at the top of that mountain and look at the Ten Commandments and visit. Um, the area has all kinds of Bible verses that you can sit and reflect on. I hope to encourage you today to take a trip up to this beautiful, beautiful venue that's just sitting there and it's not used very much and I want to encourage you to get out and go enjoy it. And I'll even give you a road map if you'll call me and ask me how to get there, I'll tell you. So here we go. This is something that um, I hope it will touch your heart and you think about this precious little mama who has laid her son to rest and um, she wrote this song and she is able to now share it and um, it's with her son who's gone on to be with Jesus. So here we go, Wings of Faith. Okay, I hope that that touched your heart. And remember, that is um, Carolyn Hyde who wrote the song, Wings of Faith, and her son, Chris Hyde on drums, Jeff Blackwell on guitar, and David Hyde on keyboard. And that little family band can never be created again until they all get to heaven because um, two of them have gone on. Chris and Jeff have both gone to heaven. Um, sadly, Jeff had cancer. And I had a video of him that we wanted to share, and he, he was an amazing musician. He, was ama he, he rewrote songs. He was just amazing. And for some weird reason, we can't get it to play. So I don't know what's going on, but anyway, we're going to keep trying to do that because we did want to share that with you. We're going to share, we're going to lighten it up a little bit because we have seen so much heartache, so much hurt, so much craziness going on in the world today. And um, yesterday, a dear friend, Deborah's nephew, went to be with the Lord, left three little boys. Again, COVID. I hate that stuff. I wish China had kept it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Mama says, never say you hate anything. I hate COVID. Um, 
it has destroyed so many families, it has taken so many lives, and it is so sad. So now I've got to lighten it up a little bit, and there's a way to lighten it up. So we're going to lighten it up, and I want you to just sit back, get your pen, get your paper, and pay attention to what I'm about to make, and it will lighten your load just a little bit because I know a lot of folks enjoyed this. It was a very fun day, and we're going to go back way back. So sit back and enjoy just a few minutes. Then we're going to come back and share some more music with you and share some more memories. Oh, we are ready. We're standing over here arguing about the way you do Crisco. Now listen, you know, isn't that typical? Well, I wouldn't have thought you'd put that much. My well, goodness. You know, that's why I'm the cook and you're the helper. It, it certainly shouldn't stick. That's okay, for sure. Okay, now y'all, we have got white lily cornbread and cornmeal mix. And to this, I'm going to add an egg. There you go. There's my egg, big boy. Now, you want to talk a little bit about Crisco and why everybody needs to use Crisco? Because it'll make you proud every time it'll... you ask Loretta Lynn, she'll <laughs> tell you. Okay, y'all, I'm putting a big old gallon of uh, blue plate mayonnaise. There's my dollar for blue plate. And I use Mayfield milk. Y'all know that. You know, we got to do the Mayfield. Now, let's stir that bad boy up. Got to make Scotty proud. Huh? Got to make Scotty proud. And this is egg, cornmeal mix, and blue plate mayonnaise. Now, this is going to... I'm getting tangled up in Rich Scott's... Now, don't you do that. I guess I noticed that we're at Rich's thing. We are, and we'll trade you this recipe for any recipe you've got. So, if y'all got, got some Chris simple, simple recipes... I got I can't get the bag <laughs> Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. 
Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. guys okay Freddie's cornbread and that cornbread is so good I hadn't made it in a long time but um, I'm in a chicken and dressing mood do y'all ever get in a chicken and dressing mood for some weird reason it doesn't have to be Thanksgiving I gotta be in chicken and dressing mood so um, I get into those cooking modes and cooking moods and cold weather just makes you want to cook now when summer comes I don't care a thing about cooking I just as soon eat a cold hater and wait like Jimmy Dickens says but we're gonna share some more music with y'all. Um, I find that when I get sad, I get depressed, I get angry, I'm going, you know, stressing over something, the music sets the tone. And this morning I listened to Charlie Pride all the way up the road, and I do love Charlie Pride. Um, I think about the many people that I've been able to interview and how many of them are gone now, and it just, you know, Charlie Pride died from COVID, and I think about this. This COVID is angry, mean stuff, but when I got the message yesterday, you know, Deborah's nephew was just like Chris. He was healthy, he was happy, he was working, he was loving life, and has three children to raise, and now he's gone. It makes you angry, so we can't stay angry. We have to move on, and we have to get over it, and so I think music will help us do that, so today, we're sharing some music with you. We're going to do some Ricky Fields music. We're going to do, um, we're going to do Freddie and Marie, which is one of the things that I love to share because he, you know, he walked into this studio and he'd never done live television. He had never done live performances like that, and all of a sudden, he was on television. And um, y'all loved it, and you loved when he was here, and you loved his uh, country attitude, and you loved his music. So I want to share this with you. Miss Marie was in the very early stages of dementia during the time we did this. We had no idea. Nobody had any idea. She is still among um, the patients over in a nursing home in Chatsworth where she has had to battle, or I think she's not in Chatsworth now, I think she's actually in Jasper. But she has had to battle um, to be away from family because of COVID. COVID made it impossible to visit your parents. It made it impossible to visit your children made it impossible to hug your grandchildren. COVID has been such a nasty, nasty thing. And I think that we've gotten through it with the music. Sometimes I'll get in the car and turn that radio up so loud, it's wonder I hadn't busted the speakers. But I just think about what we have been through um, during the Christmas holidays. When, when I lost a dear friend, Fred Wyndham went to be with Jesus. I, I was like, it's not fair because he was the best person I ever knew in my life and he did more for anybody than anybody I ever met in my life. And he encouraged others to trust and to know Jesus. And so, Fred, I'm trusting you to keep me straight and to keep me on the straight and narrow because sometimes you just want to get angry. But the music will set the tone. So we're gonna to listen today to some music and when we're gonna we're gonna end it and then we're gonna to go to Fields of the Wood to a calming spiritual place. And I hope that that will set the tone for all of us for the rest of the week because these are tough days we're dealing with and, and we have to deal with them. So find some music, find some uh, inspirational messages and let's see, before we do this, let's see what today's message is because Miss Dawn supplies her mama with these little books and Miss Dawn knows that I'm gonna read them and let's see what to, today says. Today is February the 15th and it says, Lord, create in me a pure heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Make me clean and right before you. I want to receive your forgiveness so that times of refreshing may come from your presence. Boy, oh my goodness, do we all need that. Do we all need that? America needs a cleansing for sure. And we need to cleanse everything from COVID. Okay, let's go to some music and let's sit back and let's change the tone and let's just feel good about life. Here we go. Mm -hmm. 
up in uh, Salem Number 2 Baptist Church in Mineral Bluff, Georgia. So we hope if you have not had an opportunity to meet the Taylor family, you will go. They will be in Cartersville, Georgia tonight. They travel year-round as a family. Amazing, amazing ministers of music, aren't they? Yes, they are. Let's go now to the Taylor family. I'll live again. about that song right there. I love that song. That's one of my favorite songs. Uh, 
just like uh, Missy Taylor's uh, Hoopers. Uh -huh. um, I have a friend now. Absolutely. Is that not her song? That is her song. That is her song. And there's so many things that you relate to that I'll live again. You love that song. Now, one of the songs that I have always loved is I Can Only Imagine. And today we're going to share that with our viewers because it is one of those songs. sitting in Antioch one morning, Rick Fields comes up, he starts singing, I'd never heard that song before and I fell in love with it. After I heard his story and so many other people who have changed their lives and turned their lives around no matter where you've been, what you've been facing, um, man, it just blew my mind. I love it, love it, love it. That one in Broken Ground, uh, the one that they do that I was just so crazy about that golly, Dorothy wrote 20 something years ago. Those songs just touch your heart because you know that somebody in your life made a difference and somebody in your life lifted you and brought you from a place of depth of depression and all kinds of craziness. All right, I always tell you, pick this sucker up, talk to your grandma, talk to your mama, talk to your aunt, what I would give if I had used my phone to talk to my mama. I have no recordings of my mother other than a few words at Angela's one Christmas. It makes me very, very sad. Each of you has the ability with this cell phone to interview, to talk to, and to spend time with, and I want you to do it. Right now, we're gonna share the very first time that I ever did this, and we just showed up with a camera, and I said, okay, can we do this? We did it. I wanna share it with you because now, as we approach the time of Mother's Day, as we approach the time of a birthday, as we approach the time that that person that you love so much is gone, you gotta have those memories. So use your phone, use your camera, use your video, 
and do this and capture the moment. Um, we're going to share just a little bit. And then when we come back, we're going to go to Fields of the Wood. Um, I absolutely love Ed Huber. He is the coolest dude, and he loves to write things about being a Christian and a conservative, and I love to read them. So he came up to Fields of the Wood, and we spent time, and he told us a little bit of history. And when you think about the history of religion in America, people came here to, to really... This country was founded on the premise that we want our own religion, we want our own government, we want to run our country as we want to see it run, and we want it to run in a fit way, not in a crazy, nutty way, like some of the things we're seeing today. So I want you to get in your car, zone in, and drive up to Fields of the Wood and just spend a little time reflecting. So I hope that this piece we do today will encourage you to do that. Here we go. We're going to go to just a very, very special memory that is about 13 years old. So sit back and enjoy. Moses led God's children forty years. He led them through the cold and through the night. Though they said, let's turn back. Moses said, keep going. Yay, not land is just inside. What a sweet, sweet memory. You know, these cameras are meant to record memories of our life and um, get it out, go visit with your grandmother and do it. 
I also, as you go up to Fields of the Wood, I want you to stop in Hiawassee. I want you to go up and I want you to go to the Rhododendron Garden at Georgia Mountain Fairgrounds. The rhododendrons are blooming and it's going to be beautiful. Get on their Facebook page and check out the schedule and check out the timing and take your friends, load up a bunch of your buddies and go up there and visit the Rhododendron Garden. It is absolutely incredible, breathtaking. Next week, I'm excited because I have a dear, dear friend from over the Yellow Creek community who is like those old families, like our families, the old families. And Rebecca Bannister is gonna be with me and we're gonna be talking Yellow Creek history. We're gonna be talking the Federal Road. We're going to be talking about the uh, Cherokee. We're going to be talking about the families that molded and made a community. Stancil Store, the fact that Stancil Store stood there for over a hundred years. Two different locations, one on one side of the road, one on the other side of the road. I can remember today, many, many years later, I walked into that store with my grandmother. I can remember the smell of it. I can remember that big hoop of cheese. And this was a long, long time ago. So go back to your childhood, revisit that with your parents, talk to them about the things that you used to do with them and record that and save it because uh, Rebecca's gonna be a multitude of all kinds of things we can talk about and it's gonna be exciting. I'm so tickled to death to have her coming to be with us. Right now, we're gonna take you to one of my very favorite, peaceful, just a wonderful, wonderful place to hang out and it is free. It is, it costs you nothing but some gas to get in your car and drive up to Fields of the Wood. So sit back now as Ed Huber and I take a look at what Fields of the Wood has done over the over 100 years it's been there. This is this is uh, actually I don't know. <laughs> it's in North Carolina. We right. just came out of Turtle Town, and we are in uh, North Carolina. I guess you would call it Hiawassee Dam. It's mm -hmm. part of Hiawassee Dam anyway. And I've been here five times this year. In the last well, in the, about the last 18 months, I've come here five times. And um, we are in Fields of the Woods, which many people won't even know exist. Now, I remember hearing stories about pilgrimages here where there were thousands of people and cars parked for a mile. And every time I've been here, it's me and a couple other people. What's going on here? Tell me a little history. Well, uh, when you look at the history of the organization, it was started in 1884 by a Baptist pastor or preacher named R.G. Sperling. And the early church uh, was started as the uh, Christian uh, Union. It was called the Christian Union. And Pastor Sperling had prayed for two years for revival. And in 1886, uh, eight people joined the reunion or the union. And his son, R.G. Sperling Jr., was also baptized and began to preach as well, or ordained, and they started a new organization, of course, called the Christian Union. Mm -hmm. uh, it then went for about 10 years, and in that 10-year period, they prayed for revival, prayed for revival, didn't grow much, but you have to imagine what this place must have looked like now, 1884. Okay, 1884, people travel by wagon. Even by wagon was difficult because, I mean, you're looking at mountains, uh, even horseback. Most of the time, I say most of the people traveled by walking. Okay. So the dedication was there. <clears throat> and the uh, the resistance, of course, was there to, to uh, R.G. Sperling. Now, we are here where North Carolina and Tennessee meet. Right on the line, virtually. Okay. All right. Now, the resistance he met, um, there was some violence. Can you talk a little bit about that? It was terrible violence. And I take this from a book called Like a Mighty Army. 
which was written by Charles W. Kahn, who was part of the Church of God. Mm -hmm. And according to Mr. Kahn, and he did a lot of research and talked to a lot of people uh, that still live in this area that were related, uh, offspring of the Spurlings and others that were in the initial church. And yes, there was a lot of resistance uh, as far as people being beaten with whips, uh, buildings being burned down. Uh, because of their different religion or because of they wanted to exercise their right to religion? I, it was just the difference, the, the, the Holy Ghost revival that had mm -hmm. broken out. Okay. And people were just in resistance of it. You know, today in 2010, I see revivals, I see Holy Ghost revivals breaking out because the world is in a shape today. People are looking for answers. Do you think in 1884 they were looking for answers? Oh, I believe they were hungry. I believe that the world had gotten complacent and somewhat arrogant, even mm -hmm. though it was sparse population here. Mm -hmm. There was still a, a tinge of arrogance, maybe, or, or whatever it was in that day. They were looking for a great move of God. And, mm -hmm. and you know, when, when God isn't in us to the fullest, the Bible proclaims that we're the temple of the Holy Ghost. And... And when we're not full, I believe people search for it. And certainly this man did, and he had the determination to find God in the fullest. <clears throat> and he, he stuck in there. Oh, in fact, the Mr. Sperling, R.G. Sperling, died that year. I believe it was 1886. He passed away, and his son continued the work. And the few handful of followers determined to make it go. All right. And of course, today there are four million strong in the Church of God, and we're sitting on the Church of God of Prophecy property here mm -hmm. at Fields of the Wood, which were all one at one time, because the Christian Union was then uh, changed. The name was changed to the Holiness Church as more people began to join, mm -hmm. and a man named Tomlinson, a, I believe it was A. J. A. L. Tomlinson. Uh, then joined the church, and he was one of the leaders of the church. There was a rift that happened, and they split, and the Church of God went one way, and the Church of God of Prophecy went another. But there was great revival here. Uh, the old Shearer Schoolhouse, the site of it, is still here, not far from where we're sitting today. Right. I've been there. And that schoolhouse was burned down by... And actually, it was their first meeting place. It was. And so it was burned down in, you know, basically to say, you're not going to do this. You're not going to worship God the way you want to. That's exactly that what happened. That is unbelievable. Happened. That is unbelievable. They, these people were shot at. They were stoned. They were just persecuted to the point where most people would give up and say, mm -hmm. you know, ha have it. Four million strong, they did not give up. They they were determined, uh -huh. and their missionary work, I can attest to the fact that, that it's effective there. In many parts of the world today, uh, seeing people saved by their missionaries. In fact, uh -huh. I was sharing that story with you earlier, a man that just preached at our church uh -huh. recently, who was part of a... Of a uh, uh, what would you call it, not a mob, but a, a tribe in Africa. Uh -huh. And the missionary from the Church of God went there and began to preach. This man, this uh, fellow's grandfather was the witch doctor, the medicine man. And, of course, that was real resistance. And the young man was saved. He was the only one saved that day and, and came back mm -hmm. to America and, and attended Lee College and wound up preaching at our church. Wow. In fact, another interesting story. At the time, I was praying for a job. Uh, we had prayer. He laid hands on me and prayed after that service. And the next day, I won't go into all the detail, but I was called with the best job I ever had in my life. Isn't that something? And when I finally got to the company, they told me it was miraculous how that happened because the, the resume I had sent in was lost and whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I personally uh, was raised in the Catholic Church, and I found really found the Lord here in a true way uh -huh. and was saved and have been in the Church of God now for 35 years. Wow. Um, what does it mean to you to see this property where thousands and thousands of people used to visit 
truly, I've probably been here more this year than anybody you'll ever meet because I was fascinated with it. I, I kept asking questions. Why is it just sitting here? Why is it not doing what it was meant to do? It was meant to bring revival, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And I'm saddened by it, but yet you uh, understand what goes on because Satan is always on the job. Satan uh, works overtime. He works overtime, and the Bible tells us to resist him and he'll flee, but he flees for a season. He's always right mm -hmm. back there again, and mm -hmm. it seems like the more uh, a work gets started and you begin to, uh, to see a great movement, uh, he get, comes in and, and as you, you could see in this book, uh, if he can't find one way to to disturb, he'll find another. Mm -hmm. uh, he's very deceptive in his ways. But you know what? I read the last chapter, and we win the book. We that's win a, the war. That's we awesome. Win, we, do, we do win uh, in the end. So we just have to hang in there. And uh, R.G. Sperling is a, is a great uh, inspiration to me because I think back again of what went on here and the persecution these people faced mm -hmm. in the early days and how they, even if they didn't have that persecution, just to get to church in that day. Right. I see people today that use excuses, the car wouldn't start or it was too cold out. Had to run in my pantyhose. Yeah, or whatever it <laughs> whatever. is. Whatever. Yeah. But these people would walk for miles in, the, in this weather and not on paved roads, but... I mean, even horseback riding here was difficult in that day. Mm -hmm. And many of them walked for miles and would go place to place to, uh, to, to evangelize, to, to have missionary work, and won many people to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the same revival broke out then in the early 1900s in California in Azusa Street and worldwide. There are... Uh, Back in the early turn of the century, there were a lot of revivals breaking out. And I see that happening again today. I believe the, the time of the Lord is close at hand. Mm -hmm. And I believe that men are, and women are hungry for the Lord. Right. And revival right. will break out again. Right. Well, today, when we planned this trip, it was very windy at my house. It was very cold. There was a drizzle of rain this morning. And your grandson being my cameraman, I said, you know, Nathan, I made plans to be with your grandfather today, and it's not looking so good. As we approached your area, the, the clouds lifted, the skies opened up. It was totally blue. We got here. This is the most beautiful place. And it was truly in God's plan because you and I have talked about this for a while. I've been coming here enough to know that this has to be shared with people. Every time I come, I'm, I'm just totally blown away. Um, the tomb, the crosses, the Ten Commandments, um, the Psalms. I mean, to me, this is where you want to go and just reflect. It is such an amazing, amazing place. Yes, it really is. And <clears throat> they are doing a lot of work here. Uh, they're going to rebuild the uh, area that they, the pavilion where they kept the plane. Mm -hmm. Let's in, talk a little bit about that plane. Okay. In the early days, they had a small single engine plane. Mm -hmm. uh, probably couldn't go far without refueling. But it, there is an airport here, and you can drive up to the airport. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's a very interesting drive up there because there's a lot to see up there as well. But they would take off on from that runway in that small plane and travel around, preach, maybe stay gone a day or two, a week, whatever, mm -hmm. and then come back and and uh, park the plane here and, and have church here and what have you back in these uh, woods. And, and Ed, how many people do you think have come here and worshipped God? Oh, there has to have been over the years probably millions. I'm not sure how long this place has been here. Uh, I'm okay, from 1884, it started down the road. Okay, and it progressed, and then it split, and then it progressed again. And the first time I came here, it was very, very sad looking, and it, it needed revamping. And um, actually, about the third time I came here, the pool that we have some shots of, the baptismal was full of stagnant water. And today it's full of beautiful water, and I understand there was a, baptiz a baptiz baptizing here a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean they're on the road to recovery? I believe they are. I actually belong myself to the Church of God. And, and again, this is the Church of God of Prophecy. Uh -huh. Very close. We're one at one time. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so I don't have a, a close knowledge of everything that goes on here, although I do come out here often. Uh, I just think it's such a beautiful area, so serene. 
And you can really understand uh, as you walk around the property how the early founders might have listened to God as he spoke in these mountains. Right. And that's what they claim happened to them. But I believe they are coming back. The church got a prophecy. I personally wish they would join again with the Church of God. It would be a very strong organization. And who knows, someday that may happen. But they are coming back. They were financially strapped for a while. Uh, I believe there was a split in the church. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's probably what happened. People, uh, the minute some split comes about, they quit tithing. Right. And well, in today's economy, today's everybody economy. is struggling. There's so many churches struggling. Yeah, that's absolutely right. People struggle without a job, and mm -hmm. hopefully, uh, you know, that, that's going to turn around soon, too. Uh, the Bible tells us, my people, which are called by my name, they'll show them themselves. If we turn from our wicked ways, God will hear us and, right. and bless our land again. And, I believe there are a lot of people praying that prayer. Right. And God, I believe, is a man of his word and will turn this thing around. I think so. I want to talk a little bit about, I have an aunt who was raised country Baptist, and she became a Catholic and was until the day she passed away. She went from Southern Country Baptist to Catholic. You went from Catholic to Church of God. Tell me a little bit about the difference in what you see with your religion today, because obviously religion is a big part of your life today. Yes, it is. And uh, basically, the, the Catholic Church preaches Christ uh, not with power like the Church of right. God or the Baptist Church. I've been to Catholic Mass, so I understand a little bit about it. Um, I've been to a Catholic funeral. I understand a little bit, but I don't understand the difference because I told you earlier I've been to Methodist Church, Baptist, the Pentecostal Church, Christ Church, God, you name it. I've been to all of them, and, and what I see in common is God. That's true, and, and Christ is preached in both. Mm -hmm. But the main big difference is in all my years, younger years growing up in the Catholic Church, I never heard salvation preach, being born again. You would go to the priest uh, in a confessional and tell your sins to the priest and the priest would forgive your sins. I don't criticize anybody in anybody's religion, but I just don't believe that that's the way. Uh -huh. When I began to read the Bible, uh, the Bible tells us clearly, Jesus said, to call no man your father. And I read that and I began to think about that. And I began to think about who I was really worshiping in that church. And there was more worship of the Pope and the priest, uh -huh. I believe, than there was of uh -huh. Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ is the only way. And I would ask my wife and others, what does it mean to be born again? And you know, I would go to churches that the Spirit of God would begin to move. It would literally scare the devil out. Uh -huh. I think it's intended to, Ed. <laughs> it is. It is indeed. <laughs> it's intended to. Uh, I used to work in the radio business. Uh, uh, I was an engineer at a radio station, and we were broadcasting a live revival at, a, at an all-black church. And I was in the corner... Uh, recording that or broadcasting it and that service just got the Holy Ghost fell. Oh yeah. I loved visiting with Ed Huber. Loved it, loved it, loved it. I hope that we have encouraged you, enticed you, and and spread some spirit with, with just the calming, peaceful, wonderful place that cost you nothing except some gas money to drive up there, stop somewhere and have lunch on the way, or take yourself a picnic and go and just spend some time enjoying the peace and the tranquility of God's beautiful work. Okay, we're gonna end today with something very, very special. Um, I miss my co-host, I'll tell you, and with COVID, I miss, I miss hugging people. It was like yesterday when Kenny was here, and it was really, really weird because his wife is in a compromising position, and I wasn't gonna dare hug him and in case I had germs or something like that. And he said that he had been vaccinated, but his wife hadn't. Well, I haven't, and I'm not gonna be. And so, you know, you just try to keep your safe distance and do what you can to protect others from this horrible dreaded disease. Alzheimer's, dementia, cancer, COVID, you name it, we have been hurting in America. We have been hurting for, for over two years now with this stupid COVID stuff. And um, this week, when it hit both these two young men who were in their 40s and leaving their children and their wives behind, it just opens your mind to 
what else is going to happen in this world? What, what, what else can we expect? So what we need to do is fill our churches, fill our altars, fill our prayer closets, and pray that God will deliver us from this horrible, horrible thing we are facing. I miss hugging Charlene. I miss seeing Matt and Melton. I did talk to Matt, and he's going to be with us in the near future, and I'm excited because <clears throat> I love when he delivers a message. I loved our inspirational Tuesdays, but we're all keeping this stupid safe distancing, and it makes sense. It makes sense to take care of your family and to love your family, and at the end of your family, um, recognize, acknowledge, and know what a difference a life made for you. We're going to share as we end today just a little bit of a very, very special life. I'll see you again tomorrow only on ETC. Families are very, very important, and we mm -hmm. have a special family who watches us every single day, and you know them well. You know them. Oh, I do. You've known them a lot longer mm -hmm. than I have. So do you want to talk about this? I do. Um, we have a special little something that we're going to do this morning. A very sweet lady who trades in the store all the time, and she loves to come in there and buy Crisco, just like somebody else in her family. <laughs> and um, somebody will do you proud every, every time. time. <laughs> And a, a special member of her family, somebody that she loves very much, came in and was going to buy a birthday card the other day. But he decided instead of a birthday card, maybe something a little more special. And yeah. you're fixing to get to see it. And this is for Miss Loretta Brackett. That's right. And we have a photo of Miss Loretta and Eddie mm -hmm. that they're going to show. <clears throat> you know, I don't know how old she is. Maybe something, something, something. But that is in front of the well at Loretta Lynn's old house in Butcher Holler in Kentucky. Oh. So how about that? Happy, happy birthday, Miss Loretta. Now, today, his mom is featured on the February new Heart of the Home calendar. This is a chocolate cake. Now, y'all, I can't describe it. I can't explain it. Do you smell that cake? I'm afraid to. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Miss Loretta Brackett just made us this cake. It is warm. It is wonderful. It is deadly sweet, but it is so good. And now, how are we going to do this? I get the middle. It's you get the middle. It's got all the chocolate in it. <laughs>